This is a 17-inch mid-2009 MacBook Pro in a verge condition and with a few small issues. Hey what's up everyone, I'm Andrew and in this video we're gonna make a few changes, a few upgrades and we will go a little bit further, beyond the limits. Well, this is the 17-inch mid-2009 MacBook Pro, literally 10 years old laptop with a beautiful aluminum design. I got this MacBook in a Verge cosmetic condition, with a Verge specs and with a few small issues. This MacBook has a 4 gigs of DDR3 RAM. The CPU is Core to Duo T9600 with 6 megabytes of cache memory. This model has a dual graphics, Nvidia 9400M with 256 megabytes of video memory and Nvidia GT9600 with 512 megabytes of GDDR3 video memory. And the hard disk is 500 gigs, but unfortunately the disk is not in a good condition. The MacBook sometimes is booting into the macOS, but sometimes is not. Over this MacBook, there is a few noticeable damages. But basically, the case is in a very good condition. The most noticeable damage is on the right corner of the case and few scratches on the clutch cover. The other noticeable thing are the screws. From the bottom side, almost any screw is not from this MacBook or even from any other Apple computer. When I've checked the MacBook from the inside, I saw that many screws from the logic board are missing. But however, this is not a big deal. While I make the basic tests, the MacBook was extremely hot. Under minimum usage, the temperature goes up to 96 Celsius, or that's about a 205 Fahrenheit. Honestly, I'm wondering how this MacBook is still alive. And one more problem. The charger that I got with this MacBook is not working properly. Sometimes it's charging, but sometimes it's not. Well. Now let's start and make some changes. I will start with the charger, because this is the first what I need. The charger actually is good, but the problem is coming from the magnetic head. So in this case, to fix the charger, I will need to replace the cable with the magnetic head only. Actually, I have another MacBook charger that is not working. From this charger, I will use the cable only. The charger that is not working is 60 watts only. And even if this charger was functional, it will not be an out for this 17-inch MacBook Pro. This 17-inch models request 85W charger. With 60W, the MacBook will work, but there is a high risk to damage the battery or cause some other issue. If you have similar problem, then you can replace the cable only. The cable has a two wires only, and it's very easy to connect the cables and fix the charger. Now, after all is done with the charger, first I make the basic tests, like checking the voltage and then I try it on the MacBook. The charger is working well, the battery is charging well and while using this MacBook I didn't notice any problem. So everything is working fine. Now after I finish with the charger, it's time to move on the MacBook. And first I will start with disassembling, because this MacBook needs cleaning. 
Disassembling this MacBook is not very complicated, but I need to be very careful because the MacBook have a lot of flex cables that are very sensitive, so one small mistake may cause some damage. While disassembling, when I removed the cooling fans, I saw why this MacBook working temperature is so high. The airflow is full of dust, from the outside and from the inside, so basically the hot air cannot go out of the case. Well, after I take out the logic board from the case, it's time to move on cleaning. First, I will start with the logic board. I will remove the heat sink and I will clean the logic board from the dust and dirt. Because the logic board was very dirty, the cleaning process I do it outside. Also, to clean the logic board, I used a soft brush. Well, after I clean the logic board, now I will remove the old thermal paste from the CPU and the GPUs. At this point, I have to be very careful, because the thermal paste is totally dry and it's like concrete. The CPU is not a problem to clean, but the GPUs are difficult to clean. Over the GPU chip, there is a very small components that are covered with a dry thermal paste. And if I damage one of them, the entire MacBook will not work. To clean the CPU and the GPU, I will use plastic spudger sticks, cotton buds, a soft brush and a 96% alcohol. Also, the best way to clean the dry thermal paste is by using a soft brush. Using a soft brush is a very slow process and sometimes it can take hours to clean one logic board. But also, this is a very safe way and the risk for causing some damage is barely minimum. Well, after I finish with cleaning the logic board, it's time to clean the heatsink and the cooling fans. First, I will clean the heatsink from a dry thermal paste and dust, and then I will clean the cooling fans. Well, this is it. And now everything is looking much better than before. The logic board is like a new, without dust, but also the heatsink and the cooling fans are looking great again. Now, before I continue with anything else, I will apply a thermal paste and I will mount the heatsink on the logic board. Well, the logic board is complete. Now let's move on the MacBook case. The case maybe is looking clean, but actually there is a lot of dust from the inside. So here, first I start to remove the dust using a brush, and then I continue with cleaning the other components using cotton buds, soft cleaning clothes and 96% alcohol. Also, at this point I had to be very careful to not cause some damage like to damage some flex cable, the keyboard and the other components. This is a very slow process, but however, at the end I remove even the tiniest dust from the case. 
and from the other components. The bottom case that is without any electronics, I wash it using soap and water. Actually, that was the only way to remove the dust completely. Also the bottom case is made from aluminium and it won't rust. Now, after I cleaned the MacBook from the inside, it's time to mount the logic board in the case. At this point, also, I had to be very careful to not damage some of the flex cables. Well, the logic board is on its place, but a lot of screws are missing. The only thing that is holding the logic board in the case are the screws from the fans and the flex cables. But for a lock, I have some screws from a newer but non-working MacBook. And these screws are fitting well on this MacBook Pro. Well. Now all is much better than before and let's make some upgrades. The first what I will upgrade is the RAM. From 4 gigs DDR3 I will upgrade to 8 gigs DDR3. Also 8 gigs DDR3 is the maximum that this model supports. On this MacBook there is a two more things that are missing. The hard disk bracket and the bottom case screws. But I spent some time and I found the boat. All bottom screws with 4 rubber feet and screwdriver I found it on AliExpress and they cost $2.62 including shipping. The hardest bracket I found it on eBay. But I had to order the bracket separate. The reason in one part the bracket cost $25 more than if I order the bracket in a two parts from a two different sellers. Now let's back on the MacBook and I will mount the old hard disk because this hard disk has an operating system and later I will use it to create the USB installer. But however, later we will change to SSD. Well, after I finish with cleaning from the inside, it's time to clean the MacBook from the outside. And first I will start with a keyboard. This MacBook looks clean, but actually there is a dust under the keyboard and over the case. To clean the keyboard, I will use a cotton buds, few soft cleaning cloths and 96% alcohol. While cleaning the keyboard, I had to be very careful to not damage some key or cause some other damage. The keyboard is very sensitive to clean. Even small drops of any kind of liquid including pure alcohol, may damage the entire keyboard. I mean, if the liquid passes to the inside. Well, the keyboard is looking great and now let's move on the display. To clean the display, I will use 96% alcohol but mixed with a glass cleaner. Also, I will use cotton buds for the corners and few soft cleaning cloths. And the last part to clean is the top side. Over the top side I will use a 96% alcohol but also mixed with glass cleaner. On the top side also had to be a very careful around the Apple logo. Because the liquid may pass here to the inside and cause some damage. Well this is it. The MacBook is shining again and now let's create a USB installer and upgrade to SSD. Because I want to get more from this MacBook, I will install the latest macOS Catalina. A lot of unsupported models actually can run the newer macOS versions. To create the USB installer, I will use a USB from 16 gigs, and I will use the macOS Catalina tool by DOSDUT1. First, I release the USB using this utility, as usual, and then I continue to the macOS Catalina tool. This tool is very easy to use and does you done a great job here. 
The tool has a very simple design and it's very easy to navigate through. Also, after installing macOS Catalina, I don't need to apply any patches manually. Actually, everything is going automatically and it's very easy to do it. Well, now after I create a USB installer, I will remove the old hard disk and I will install a new 256 gigs SSD. Well, this is it. And now let's install the macOS Catalina. The installing process actually is the same as installing macOS on a supported Mac computer. There is nothing complicated and it's very easy and simple process. And finally, the macOS Catalina is fully functional. Because the macOS Catalina is beta, there is some small bugs. The bugs are noticeable in animation transition and while playing some videos on web, but generally everything is working fine. The both graphics on this MacBook Pro are fully functional, with full acceleration. The other hardware is functional also. And personally, I didn't notice some other problems, except few small bugs that are usual with beta release. Also on this MacBook, I install a Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere because I want to test this MacBook in video editing. The both applications are running smooth, which is very surprising. The 1080p video editing is possible, but it's going a little bit slow. But a 4K, not really. Maybe some are very short clips, but that's will going to be a very slow. But also, this MacBook is great for doing the other things. It's great for making some artworks, multimedia, browsing the web and all other basic things. Also this MacBook, it still has a beautiful and modern design. It has a large display with 1920x1200 resolution and the display provides a great and quality image. The keyboard is with backlight, so typing in a low light or in a dark it won't be a problem. However, I didn't stop here and I test the other macOS versions, like the macOS Mojave and the macOS High Sierra. The both operating systems are working perfectly on this MacBook, without any lags or any other problem. The Mac animations, web browsing, watching videos and everything else is going perfectly smooth, which is not bad for a 10 years old laptop. And one more thing, on this MacBook Pro I've tried to use eGPU and it's fully possible. Officially, to use eGPU on a MacBook you need Thunderbolt connection, but unofficially the eGPU is working over the Express card connection, I mean on these older models. To connect desktop GPU on this MacBook I used EXP GDC 8.5C dock and Express card cable. But unfortunately, not any GPU is supported. I test this MacBook with a three different GPUs, with NVIDIA GT 9600 with 1 gig of video memory, NVIDIA GTX 960 with 4 gigs of video memory, and AMD RX 580 with 8 gigs of video memory. The best results, but just for now, I got it under the macOS High Sierra. Under the macOS High Sierra, the NVIDIA GT9600 is out of the box supported. I mean, I don't have to use some drivers or anything else. Just I need to connect the GPU right after starting the MacBook. But also, I had to use an external monitor. The GPU is fully recognized, just it shows like a different model. But there is no any hardware issues. The GPU is working perfectly and with full hardware acceleration. The NVIDIA GTX 960 is not always working under the High Sierra. Also, for this GPU I used NVIDIA Web Drivers. The Lilo Kext and the NVIDIA Graphics Fix Up Kext. I made a dozen tests and I got this GPU only two times working. But shortly after connecting the GPU, the GPU stopping working by itself and is disconnecting automatically. 
the AMD RX 580 was not recognized under the High Sierra, even after I try any possible combination to make it work. Under the macOS Mojave and the macOS Catalina, all is different. The both operating systems are recognizing the eGPU, but unfortunately, none of them is working properly. So, because the GPU is recognized, this actually gives me a big hope and I'm pretty sure that some GPU will work under the macOS Mojave and macOS Catalina. For now, I done this test with the GPUs that I already have, but definitely I will search for some GPU that is supported and do more tests. Well, basically this is all about this 10 years old 17 inch mid 2009 MacBook Pro. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give some new ideas and inspiration to back some old touch in function again. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.